So then you can't be saying. See, God wanted, he wanted to be like this. When you step out and do something and it turn out wrong, you say, man, something told me not to do that. Something told me. See, he wants you to stop saying something. Have that relationship where you got it. Okay, God said do this. Then he said, stop, we're going over here. Now we're going over here. Okay. See, faith is designed to work for kings. Kings of the real kingdom. Hey, hey. Yeah. Do this. Do that. Come here. Go over there and cut those three trees down. Yes, sir. Go do it. God gave you dominion and authority. See, he needs somebody to use their faith so he can get his will done in the earth realm. So if, he, if God wants to count on you, is he in trouble or do he have to look for somebody else? Self-check, self-check. In all your ways, he's out of here. Greetings and welcome to another broadcast of Grow to Go Christian Center. My name is Assistant Pastor Herman Alexander Sr. And today we're going to continue our faith teaching, okay? We're going to start at part three today, okay? So get your Bibles, notebooks, your pens, your markers, and get ready for some word. And then I'm going to pray, and then we're going to have a praise song from our very own minister, Sylvia Merriweather, and then we're going to come back and feed off of this word of God, okay? So let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus. We thank you for Holy Spirit. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We thank you for another opportunity, Father, to gather around your word. I thank you for the anointing on, on my life to teach and minister your word. Thank you for the anointing on the message, the anointing on the people. I pray that you anoint every heart, every ear, every eye to receive and believe your word and act on your word, becoming doers of your word and not hearers only in Jesus' name. Satan, I break your powers over this service, over the people. You cannot hinder them from receiving the words and the blessings of God. You cannot hinder them from being doers of the word and not hearers only in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I decrease for your increase, all of you, none of me. I step back so you may step forward. Manifest yourself as the teacher through myself, the yielded vessel, bringing forth revelation, knowledge, spiritual understanding for our spiritual growth and maturity, taking us all to the next level in life and in ministry in Jesus' name as we grow our faith in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory, all the adoration for what will be accomplished and what will be revealed through the teaching of your word. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen and amen. Okay, now we'll have a praise song and we'll be back to teach the word. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you for that wonderful song. God is an awesome God. We thank God for the blood. If it wasn't for the shed blood, we'd be in hell on our way. Amen. So we want to thank, 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 thank God for his plan of salvation and for including us in his plan. Amen. Thank you for that song, Minister Merriweather. Amen. Amen. All right. We've been teaching on a series of lessons dealing with faith, the believer's lifestyle. And our subtitle was Developing the Faith That Takes. Because if God is telling us that it's gonna take faith to walk in this victory, then we gotta develop our faith, the faith that takes, okay? Because we gotta take dominion, we gotta take authority, we gotta take our proper place, we gotta take our purpose, and we have to walk in God's will for our life. And it's gonna take faith to do it, amen? Now, uh, our purpose now, we have increased our purpose now our purpose is to introduce to those who don't know or who have forgot or relaxed their faith some people have actually relaxed their faith that they must operate in faith all the days of their life in order to get God to move on their behalf and for them to have victory and success in life as a Christian, as a believer, as a disciple, and as a follower of Christ. All wrapped in with one, I'll say it again. Our purpose is to introduce to those who don't know, because you got to remember, you always have newcomers listening and coming. So you got to recognize they might just not know. God says in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed, why? For lack of knowledge, they didn't know, amen. So the purpose is to introduce to those who don't know or those who have forgot or have relaxed their faith that they must operate in faith all the days of their life in order to get God to move on their behalf and for them to have victory and success in life as a Christian, as a believer, as a disciple, and a follower of Christ. Now, our goal and objective is to show you that it is critical that you learn to talk God talk or talk like God. Why? So that you can benefit from the promises, the blessings, the dominion, and the authority that God has provided for his children to have in the earth realm, which will manifest in your life as you walk and live by faith. I'll say that again. Our golden objective is to show you that it is critical that you learn to talk God talk or talk like God so that you can benefit from the promises, the blessings, the dominion and authority 
that God has provided for his children to have in the earth realm, which will manifest in your life as you walk and live by faith. Hebrews 11, 6 says what? It's impossible to please God, right? Without faith. So if it's impossible to please God without faith, then we must master faith. That's one of the most important subjects you ever can learn or you should study because everything is going to be operating by faith. In the world, we purchase goods and services with money. In the kingdom of God, we purchase goods and services by faith. Not that we don't use money, but it's by faith that you get it. Because see, by faith, what's missing in your life can be made manifest if you believe. That's why we have to increase our belief because you only have faith for what you believe, amen? So if you don't believe it, you're not gonna have faith for it. And because you don't see it, doesn't mean it can't come to pass, but you have to use faith to bring it to pass. Now we seen, we said in our earlier teachings, all creation was started by faith. In Genesis chapter one, one through 31, God didn't take an earth machine and make earth, did he? He spoke things into existence. And God said, and God said, and God said. And then later on, in Genesis chapter 2, he gave us, he gave Adam, that is, all the creation that he made. And he said, now you do it. And Adam began speaking things in existence. He didn't take an encyclopedia and look up, oh, what is this, what is that? He began speaking it, led by Holy Spirit, of course, and spoke things into existence. And the things that he spoke into existence, they are still in manifestation today, okay? Now, we said any communication other than faith is prohibited in the kingdom of God. Why? Because God only responds to faith. He doesn't respond to you crying and belly aching. He don't want to see you do that. But if you don't know faith, that's what you'll be doing because you have nothing to rely on. You have no hope because faith gives us the hope because it, uh, Hebrews 11, one says now, faith is what? the evidence, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if something's missing in your life, you use faith to cause it to come to pass. Now the, the challenging factor that we have is sometimes it take a long time. But faith is when? Now. now. It's always in the now. So you have to believe that you receive the answer at the time you pray. The Bible said the answers of God are what? Yea and amen. What does that mean? Yes and so be it. I mean, you can have it. As long as you ask in line with his word, you can have it. But if you don't know the word, then you don't know what to say. So you hurt yourself. And then you try to get it yourself. And sometimes you even hurt the situation. And we also say that faith must be accompanied, accompanied by action and works. The Bible tells us that Faith without works is what? Dead. So you won't get no results. So you can't just say you have faith and you're not using your faith by works. Okay? And James 1.22 says, but be what? Doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. You can't even blame it on the devil if you don't do what the word says. Amen? Now, let's focus on works. What is works? Works is speaking the word. Meditating on the word, praying the word, and confessing the word. Your confession brings possession. So you have to confess it till you possess it. Amen. Your confession is actually like water. If you plant a seed, you water the seed and it grows. So your confession of the thing that you're praying for is like water. It brings it to pass. But you have to do it. And if you ease up on your confession, you make the manifestation take longer to come because you stop watering the seed, amen? So if it's taking too long, you have to observe or you still watering your seed or you doing the works. Now, we said you being obedient to live by faith will keep you alive and preserve you in your Christian walk and you will experience abundance. But you gotta grow there, right? You gotta grow. Okay, let's turn to our foundation scripture, which is Habakkuk chapter two and Romans chapter one. 
Habakkuk chapter 2 and Romans chapter 1. In Habakkuk 2, uh, I'll drop down to verse 3. Let's read verse 1. Well, let's start at verse 2. Habakkuk 2, 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon the tables that he may run that does what? Readeth it. So that means you got to write it and you got to read it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. Sound like it's God's timing and not ours. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. So in other words, though it might take a while, he said wait for it. Because it will what? Surely come. That sounds like God's stamp of approval. It will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just of those that are righteous. Any righteous people in the house? Yes. Amen. But the just shall live by what? Yes. His faith. So that means your faith has to be at a level where you're comfortable, where you believe it, and you have confidence in it. So when you use your faith, you know it'll come to pass. So you won't be crying and belly aching and sweating. Now, don't get me wrong. In the beginning, it may be a little shaky, but God does something in the beginning. When you first start getting into the kingdom of God and using your faith, he, he, he likes to bring things to pass kind of fast. But see, that's a revelation that it does work. See, you got to know yourself that the word works when you work the word. Amen? Romans 1. Romans 1. How else can you be an example to the unbeliever if you haven't tried it for yourself? Because you got some unbelievers out there talking about that faith stuff don't work. They just don't understand what Jesus accomplished at the cross, opened the door for faith to work for us. Amen. Even Jesus himself had a faith shaking moment when he was on the cross. He said, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, God had already said earlier, he would never leave us or forsake us. He told Joshua, I would be with you when? Always. But even Jesus had a faith shaking moment because it was taking too long. Three days up there on the, on the cross, bleeding, flies fly. Father, why, why, why you leave me in this bag? Because he's leaving you alone. It's just leaving you. But when he says, I need to never leave you or forsake you, forsaking you is leaving you in a bad situation. So Jesus said, Father, why does that? Why have thou left me in this bad situation? So he had a faith shaking moment too, okay? So we all gonna have some faith shaking moments, but God's gonna come through, amen. And see, God is going to on purpose allow you to go through this and that because he's growing you up. He's shaping you and molding you because some stuff that's gonna happen in the future, you're gonna need some strong faith, amen. And God knows the ending from the beginning. So that's why he's going to let you go through this and that. Not to hurt you. Not to hurt you. Let me, let me show you this while we're here. Oh, wait a minute. Romans. Okay. Keep your finger in Romans. Go to 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians 10. God ain't going to never hurt you. But what you have to understand how God flows. God knows everything, right? So you might say, well, why God let me go through this? He know I can't do it. Okay. Verse 13, he's trying to show you something. First Corinthians 10, 13 says, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That means somebody else has went through what you're going through. Maybe not as bad, maybe even worse. But God is what? Faithful. That means he'll come through. Who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you are able. So he already know you can make this thing. It might not look like it, but he said you can make this thing. You can make it through. He said, but we'll with the temptation. Also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear. It. So if you wait long enough and don't faint and give up, you will see God come through. He's going to give you the answer. The problem is if we're too far away from God, we can't hear him because he speaks in the small, still voice. And then God loves you so much that sometimes he sends people across your path.
to give you the revelation that you need to hear. Amen. He got you. He got you. You just have to trust and believe. Amen. And if you're not sure, just go into prayer. And if you come out of prayer, go into praise. Amen. Because he says what? He inhabits the praises of his people. Amen. And then sit and be still and let God talk to you. Amen. Amen. Verse 16, Romans 1, 16. It says, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel. What does gospel mean? The good news. For I'm not ashamed of the good news of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that was, does what? That believes. So do you believe? To the Jew first and then also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from what? Faith to faith. As it is written altogether, the just shall live by faith. So that's our lifestyle. The just shall live by faith. Okay. Now, let's go to our first point. First point. What are you eating spiritually? What are you eating spiritually? Look at uh, Proverbs 4 and Matthew 12. Proverbs chapter 4 and Matthew 12. What are you eating spiritually? You can eat some good stuff spiritually and you can also eat some bad stuff spiritually. So what are you feeding off of? We said Proverbs 4. Drop down to verse 14. It says, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Why not? Avoid it. Talking about avoiding the path of the wicked. So avoid the path of the wicked. Pass not by the path of the wicked. Turn from the path of the wicked and pass away. Why? For the wicked, they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And the wicked sleep is taken away, unless the wicked cause some to fall. For the wicked, do what? Eat the bread of wickedness. I guess that's how they got wicked. And drink the wine of violence. Matthew 12. Matthew 12, drop down a third. Let me see. Did I say Matthew 12? Scratch that. Proverbs 13. I was a little ahead of myself. My mistake, your error. Proverbs 12. I mean 13. 13. Come on, get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs. So you gotta do confession. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Okay, you got it now? Okay, yeah, straighten up. We're on TV. Proverbs 13, verse 2. It says, A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressors shall do what? Eat violence. So, if you're not feeding off the word of God, you're feeding off of violence. Because there's only one way, good and evil. God or the devil. If you don't serve God, you automatically are serving the devil because there's only two gods to serve. Amen. So if you haven't made the decision to do it God's way, you have entered into the devil's. See, Holy Spirit wants to lead and guide you. The devil wants to mislead you and misguide you. He wants to make you think, oh, that faith stuff don't work. Because he throws thoughts at you, especially when it starts taking a long time to manifest. But you have to believe you have it already. And to bring it to pass is just like if you're flying a kite and the kite's way up in the air and you're bringing the string down. Every time you do this, you're watering the seed. I thank you, Father. I believe I have the new house. I believe I have that new car. I believe I have that thousand dollars. I believe I have the building. I believe I have whatever. I believe the kids are acting right. I believe I have my new spouse. I believe I have everything that I prayed for. Amen. I believe I have my purpose revealed. See what I'm saying? You're watering it. You're watering it. You can't just sit there and don't do anything. God created a system, a system of words. But these are words of faith. 
And what is faith? Strong belief, strong trust, and strong confidence that what God said will come to pass without fear, without doubt, but with what? Expectation. If you don't walk in expectation, then it's like you're doubting God. You don't believe it's going to happen. Expect, when you're expecting it, you're looking for it. Just like you're looking for the check in the mailbox. Amen. You're checking the computer. See the direct deposit hit. You're in expectation. Well, same thing when you pray for something. You expect God to come to pass, okay? Amen. If it's taking too long, put pressure on the word. Amen. Father, you said in your word. That you would not mm -hmm. leave me alone. You wouldn't forsake me. You said you would never see the righteous begging, forsaken. Never see their seed begging bread. So, Father, and then after you give him his word again, just start praising him and thanking him. Okay? Because you're telling him then, I believe you, Father. I believe you. I believe you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Okay. Amen. Next point. How did you get like you are today? How did you get like you are today? If somebody say revelation time. How did you get like you are today? That's why you have to be careful who you're listening to. You Got to be careful who you believe in. Because there's a saying, you become who you hang around. Amen. And God tells you, he said, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So we got some family members that are unbelievers. They cool, don't get me wrong, because they their family. But they need to go on the prayer list. Yeah. In the prayer box. Amen. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs 4. Let's go to, drop down to verse 19. It says, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not, or the wicked know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. God seemed like he's trying to tell us to hold on to his words. Pay attention to his word. Verse 21, let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them where? In the midst of thine heart. Why? For they are life to those that find them and health to all your flesh. Now, watch this. You know, I like the acronyms. God give me them acronyms. He's talking about the word here. He's talking about wisdom. Verse 22. For the word of God is living in faith every day to those that find them and health to all your flesh. So the word of God is life to those that find them. So I, that find them, that means I gotta look for them. I gotta do some studying. I gotta do some searching. Because God gave us 66 bags of seed to sow for whatever we need. This book covers everything you would ever want, need, or desire but you obtain it by faith. That's why you have to master faith. So how did you get like you are today? Because of what you were saying, based on what you knew and what you didn't know. Who you were listening to, who you wasn't listening to, who you was believing and who you wasn't believing. You can't feed off of everybody's table. Amen? Amen. Because Satan's out there and Satan mixed truth with false doctrine because that's called deception inside of all deception there is truth because it's the truth that gives the deception the power to deceive that's how he does it he don't just come out and tell you a straight lie he got a sugar coat a little bit mm -hmm. like he did Eve in the garden did God say you would surely die she, he, she said yeah oh you ain't gonna surely die you're just gonna be smart like God so she leaned towards the truth and forgot about the disobedience. And what happened, they did it anyway and separation manifested. 
Like he said in the beginning, the day that you disobey, disobey me or eat off the tree that I told you not to eat off, you should surely die. So what he was saying was, the day that you disobey me, you will be separated from me. And what happened? He kicked them out the garden. They were separated from God. So God had to come up with a plan to get unity back with his creation. That was through Jesus. So if you accepted Jesus, you're back in fellowship with God. But you've got to renew your mind because if we got to walk by faith and not by sight, that's different. That's hard. That's unusual. And if we don't know that, then we'll try to believe God and still walk by sight and wonder how come things aren't happening. And then we'll come up with that famous saying, uh, well, maybe God don't mean for me to have it. See, we say that because we don't know. We don't know what his will is. And we don't know what his will is because we don't know what his word is. Because we only open the Bible on Sunday. Praise the Lord, amen. Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Now we go to Matthew 12. How did you get like you are today? You've been eating the wrong stuff. If the word of God is life, I need to feed off the word of God every day, right? Because I'm in the world every day. I need to be in the word every day. Because when you get in the word, the word is anointed and it causes you to make different decisions. Your decisions will begin to line up with the word of God. Amen. We say um, Matthew 12. Drop down to verse 33. It says either make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. You are the tree. You're the tree. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of what? The abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're speaking evil stuff, it's because you still got some evil stuff in you. Because it's going to come out. That's why you have to get the word in you in abundance. You got to get all that evil stuff out of there. So when situations and circumstances come up, you won't say the wrong thing. So you want the word of God to come on the scene because the word of God will change it to be in line with God's will for your life in that situation. But if you're full of evil, then you're going to treat people wrong. You're going to talk to people wrong. And you're going to make the wrong decision. And then you're going to give up on God because you're going to say, I'm just going to do this. So now it's in your hands. And what did, we saw? what did we say the hit song in hell was? I did it my way. That's how, how, that's how failure starts. It takes, I'm just going to do this. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. Ain't that how Satan got kicked out of heaven? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And God said, not up here. <laughs> amen, amen. Not up here. Jesus said, man, I seen God kick Satan out of heaven just like that. Man. But you know, when God kicked Satan out of heaven, he didn't go to hell. He came to earth. And he's down here trying to mess with y'all. See, he mad at God, but he can't get God. So the closest thing he can do to get God is to mess with God's people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he likes, he uses deception, but it's spirits of mind control. Because he's trying to get you off the word. See, he don't mind you going to church, but he don't want you to get this. Because this is what defeated him, the word. When Jesus was in the desert and Satan tempted him, what did he say? It is written. Because the word don't change. Now you got some ignorant people in the pulpit that changed the word. But when you're talking to people about the word of God and you hear something that you hadn't heard before, ask them, hey, what chapter and verse is that in? Because it might be something that you didn't come across because nobody knows everything. You know, they might have been studying something that you hadn't won across yet. But ask them. Because some people just 
talk about what they heard somebody say and it wasn't really written. You know, like people talk about Job, uh, uh, God, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. That, that's not scriptural. God didn't say that. Job said that because he assumed that God did that. You know, but what did he do? He stood steadfast because his wife told him, why don't you just curse God and die? He should have no, no, I guess not. He shouldn't do that. <laughs> he should have said, shut up. See, see, out of the abundance of her heart, see, I might have had a left hook still in there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah. But you know how it is. You rise up. See, you got to catch the flesh. See, I caught the flesh. Flesh wanted to rise up. Amen. Oh, let's go to verse 35. A good man. Any good man in the house? Amen. Good humans. Hum humanities. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart. Now we focus on treasure. Treasure is stored up goods. What are you storing in your heart? Is it good treasure or is it evil treasure? Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Amen. Sound like you reap what you sow. Amen. So, now we see we got to change what we've been, our spiritual appetite. We got to change our spiritual appetite. And how did you get like you are today? Based on what, what you've been saying. You know, some people, they, and I know it's revelation. They, they just don't have the revelation. There's some people in church, they just, people grow at different levels, right? They grow at different levels. Um, I was talking to somebody one day and they were saying, oh, you know, every year at this time, my allergy acts up. I said, your what? Your allergy. I said, do you want it to act up? They said, no. So why are you putting ownership on it then? Why would you say my? You gonna keep you? You ought to see them uh, uh, them commercials when they be advertising different medicines, and they'll say my so and so, my so. I said I was showing my wife one day. I said, look at them. They just confessing it and don't realize they speaking it into existence because you have what what you say. You have what you say. Let's let us let us let us go to Mark. So we right there, Mark eleven. Revelation time, Mark 11. Je Mark 11, 22. And Jesus answering said to them, have what? Faith in God, have belief in God, or have the God kind of faith. See, when God spoke things into existence, he just said it and expected manifestation. Amen? But now, you got to know what you're saying because if you don't know what you're saying, you can actually say the wrong thing and get manifestation. Verse 23, for verily I say to you that whosoever shall say to this mountain, the mountain recognizes, I mean mountain being the situation or circumstance, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he what? Says shall come to pass, he shall what? Have whatsoever he says. So it's unlimited. So you have to be careful when you have a health condition. When you're talking about it or discussing it, you have to say, in the natural, my knee hurt. And then follow it up. But I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. Always follow it up with the word of God. But in your explanation, even when you explain it to the doctor, tell the doctor, say, doctor, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man of faith. And I believe in God for my healing. But in the natural, my left knee kind of challenged him a little bit. And he going to prescribe you some medicine and tell you what to do. He said, I thank you, for, I th I thank you, doctor, for that. And you go ahead and put your medicine on. I thank you, Father. I believe I'm healed in Jesus' name. I believe that I don't have to use this medicine all the days of my life in Jesus' name. See what I'm saying? Because you believe in God for restoration. He said he would restore. Okay. So you, you tell God, Father, you said you would restore. I thank you, Father. My youth is renewed as the eagles. Thank you, Father. All my joints in my body are restored in Jesus' name. Amen. 
because you have what? Whichever you say. Verse 24, therefore I say to you, what things, things, that's unlimited, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall what? Have them. So you have what you say, if you believe it. Question is, do you believe it? Do you really, 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 really believe it? Okay? That's why you have to say it over and over and over and over and over again. Because repetition is the seed that's sown that produces the fruit of the harvest. What does that mean? Repeating it, repeating it, repeating it touches your belief system and causes it to grow to another level. Because you keep saying it and saying it and saying it. Just like some of them times when it's cloudy outside, you say, I believe it's going to rain. Now, that particular day, do you really want it to rain? Especially when you plan this picnic or this family reunion. You look at the weather forecast. Oh, it's going to rain that day. We better do it another day. Well, you had the many in authority and didn't even use it. Sometimes I go fishing, I look at it and see, it's going to rain. I say, oh, okay. You take authority over that rain. And what I do, I'll cancel the rain. It's in the name of Jesus. I speak to the clouds and command you to cancel the rain until 10 o'clock tonight in Jesus' name. See, that way I get my fishing in and it still got some rain. See what I'm saying? I don't be like y'all. Y'all want to rebuke the rain because we need the rain. You know what I'm saying? My lakes need to be up so we get fish. The farmers need the rain to grow. But see, y'all just rebuke the rain. Re rain stop in Jesus' name. Don't, don't come back no more. <laughs> You can't do it like that. We need rain. Like right now, we need some rain, right? So just, it's, it's just how you say it, you know? Now, if you don't want to be out there, a lot of, anybody like driving in the rain? Well, ask God for it to rain at night when you go to bed, okay? See, that was simple, it was real easy. Just counsel the rain to the night when you go to bed, okay? Y'all remember the testimony about the hell? I did that? Yeah. See, there was five minutes. I just praised God for five minutes and it stopped. Mm -hmm. So you have what you say. Amen? So watch what you're saying. Okay, now. Let me see. Point three. Where are you sowing? Where are you sowing? Sowing. And it's not just money. Because there's always an opportunity to sow a seed in, in Genesis, let's turn to Genesis. Genesis, is that 22? Genesis 22. I think that's Genesis 2, or that's Genesis 8. Let me see real quick. Genesis 8, Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Genesis 8. Genesis 8. 822, last scripture in Genesis 8. It says, while the earth remains, Seed, time, and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall what? Not cease. So therefore, that's twofold. Now, what I mean by twofold, there will always be an opportunity to sow a seed of some kind. Not just money, based on what you're doing, based on what you're not doing, based on what you're saying, based on what you're not saying. Secondly, you will always be sowing a seed of some kind in those areas. Because when you do nothing, you're sowing a seed. So when you don't get the harvest, it's because you didn't sow the seed. Or you sowed the seed, but you didn't water it. See, not watering your seed is sowing a seed for slow growth or no growth. So you're always going to be sowing a seed of some kind in some way, form, or fashion, by what you're doing and what you're not doing. Or if you're doing the wrong thing, you're gonna get the wrong harvest that you didn't want. And you can wonder what happened. Well, that's what you sowed. Amen? So that's twofold. You're always sowing the seed. So always put yourself in position to sow the right seed, the right way, the right time. Amen? Okay. Galatians chapter six and Proverbs three. Galatians 6 and Proverbs 3. Galatians chapter 6 and Proverbs 3. Galatians 6 
Galatians chapter 6. There it is, old Galatians, next to Ephesians. Galatians 6, let's drop down to verse 7. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, what happens? That shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Stop right there. Corruption is destruction, or corruption is death. Death is separation. Now, death doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die, but it doesn't eliminate. It depends on what you're sowing. Amen. But for the most part, it's separation. You're separating yourself from the promises of God. You're separating yourself from a positive result. Okay? Be not deceived, God is not marked. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. For he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Or you could say, shall of the spirit reap living in faith every day everlasting. Because it's a lifestyle, amen? Proverbs 3, Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 should already be planted in your heart. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart. The reason why he said all your heart is because if you do some of your heart, you leave the door open for doubt and fear. So it says trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Sometimes sometime God give us some strange instructions. So don't lean to what makes sense. Faith is not designed to make sense. Faith is just designed to be, this is God, what God says to do. This is God's way of doing and being right. Because it's whose kingdom? It's his kingdom. It's his plan. It's his purpose for, our, for us, amen? So we come in to the kingdom of God. We're saying, Jesus, you're Lord and Savior, Savior of the world, you're the Lord. Regardless, amen. Everybody always want to tell God, I'll do it, I'll do it. But when he give you that strange instruction, you want to step back. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. It don't make sense. Who asked you? Okay? Amen. Better repent and say, Father, I messed up our trip. I was thinking about myself. I'll do it your way. Amen. Real quick and you're back in fellowship. Amen. Amen. Because God know already ahead of time. That some of the stuff he tell us to do don't sound like it makes sense. Like bathing in the Jordan River, the muddy, muddy Mississippi, seven times, and then you get your sight back. Instead of going to this clear pool, you know, he gives some strange. But the Bible says that you are a peculiar people, right? That's because your daddy peculiar. you. So you, Jesus said, the works that I do, you shall do also. Okay, so you're going to be doing some peculiar stuff. Amen. But see, when you do that, that stands out. That makes it look like you know something. People say, I want what you got. I want to know what you know. What church you go to? See, people should be asking you that if you're out there speaking the word. Amen. Now, what we say? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Oh. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and what will happen. He shall direct your path, okay? So then you can't be saying, see, God wanted, he wanted to be like this. When you step out and do something and it turned out wrong, you say, man, something told me not to do that. Something told me. See, he wants you to stop saying something. Had that relationship where you got it. Okay, God said do this. Then he said stop, we're going over here. Now we're going over here. Okay. See, faith is designed to work for kings. Kings of the real kingdom. Hey, hey. Yeah. Do this. Do that. Come here. Go over there and cut those three trees down. Yes, sir. Go do it. God gave you dominion and authority. See, he needs somebody to use their faith so he can get his will done in the earth realm. So if, he, if God wants to count on you, is he in trouble or do he have to look for somebody else?
self-check, self-check. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And what happens? He shall direct your path. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Let me see if we can squeeze this out. Main point four. Growing strong in faith. Okay, let's look at a couple of biblical characters. Look at uh, Romans 4. Romans chapter 4, Romans 4, Romans 5. Growing strong in faith. We have to take our belief to a higher level, which automatically takes our faith to a higher level because we only have faith for what we believe. Romans 4, verse 20, talking about Abraham. Let me see how long we may see. 17 Romans 4 17 it says as it is written I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who makes alive the dead and calls those things which what be not as though they were so when you see something that not like it's supposed to be that shouldn't bother you you speak it into existence how it's supposed to be 18 who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being not what? Weak. weak in faith. So if you're not weak in faith, you're what? Strong in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He what? He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being what? Fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. You got to be strong in faith, amen? Romans 5, drop down to verse 9. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him, and I think that's the wrong scripture, so don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, skip that one. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews 11, 8. It says, by faith, Abraham when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, did what? Obey. Obeyed and he went out, not knowing where he went. God said, get away from your kindred and go to a place I will show you. I will show you. That means I'm going to tell you later. So he just go. Now, my thing was, he went out the house. Did he know to go north, south, east, or west? He just got out there and started walking. Lot said, I'm going to, man. I'm going to. But he didn't know. But he what? Believed. He believed. Amen. He believed. Look at verse 7. It says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things, what? Not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is how? By faith, by believing. It never rained before. God said, make an ark. Oh, it's going to rain. He said, okay, where the wood at? And did it. Look at Hebrews 11. I mean, uh, verse 11. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him who? God. How? Faithful who had did what? Promised. One more. Verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried up, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall your seed be called. Accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from where also he received him in a figure. God told him to kill his son. He said, okay. But he had a vision of God raising his son up from the dead because he knew him. And because he knew him, he was close to him, he believed him. Amen. Amen. And then he told him, look over to your left. He went over there. 
seen the ram. Because Isaac even said, hey, where's the sacrifice at? He said, don't worry about it. God going to make himself a lamb. Amen. Amen. Praise the God. I mean, praise the Lord. I'm out of time. Thank you for yours. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to thank you viewers for viewing in today. But uh, we want to make sure you have an opportunity to increase your belief, increase your faith. And the first step is coming into the kingdom of God. And that happens according to the scripture in Romans 10, 9 and 10, which says, But if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It says, how do, well, how does that happen? Verse 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So repeat this prayer out after me, and everybody in here, we're going to be on a, one accord to pray with you. In the name of Jesus, uh, dear, God heaven, dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. You said in your word, if I call upon the name of Jesus, you would not cast me out but you would take me in, and I thank you for it. You said in your word, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead, I would be saved. I believe in my heart, and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God, and he died for my sins, and he was raised from the dead for my justification. And I receive him right now as my Lord and Savior. You also said in your word that if I would ask for Holy Spirit, you would give him to me. So I'm asking you now to fill me with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come inside me. Lead me. Guide me. Anoint me. Empower me. And direct my life so I may live for God. Reveal to me God's plan and purpose for my life here on earth. Thank you, Father, for saving me and fulfilling me with Holy Spirit and, and for revealing to me God's plan for my life here on earth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right. We want to celebrate you if you've prayed that prayer for the first time. You're now born again and filled with God's precious spirit. And we just want to encourage you to get into a good Bible-believing, Bible-based church and begin growing faith, walking in your word, walking in God's word, that is, so that you can develop a strong, personal, intimate relationship with him. And he will reveal to you your plan and purpose here on earth. It's more to just getting saved and filled with the spirit. You're doing that for the work of the Lord. God told uh, Moses when he led the children of Israel, he told Pharaoh to let my people go so they may what? Serve me. Amen. So it's about serving God. So once again, we want to thank you again and encourage you to get into a good Bible-based church. And if you're led to sow a seed, then we stand in agreement with you for the hundredfold return on your giving. Call the number at the bottom of the screen and we'll be glad to receive that seed. And once again, we stand in agreement with your seed sown that you have the over and above abundant return on your giving in Jesus' name. Now, I want to pray a prayer of benediction over you. Thank you once again for tuning in. And if anybody's out there and you're having health challenges, Heavenly Father, you said in your word, Father, that Jesus took their infirmities, bore their sickness, and by his stripes they were healed. So those having health challenges, we thank you, Father, for healing them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. Those that need deliverance, we pray, Father, that they're totally delivered from the top of their head to the soles of their feet if any challenge that has come upon them. And those needing a financial breakthrough, Father, we pray that you open doors of opportunity Father, to bless them financially over and above, Father, so they can serve you with all their heart, might, and soul, Father. And show yourself strong in their life, Father. Be glorified, Father, from their obedience to walk in your word in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen, amen. Once again, we're going to thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time for the continuation of part three. Amen.